six-year-old, I came into this school not knowing what to expect. After all, I had just moved from Westchester. I was a little girl who was used to driving everywhere who had never heard of the subway. I lived in a blue house surrounded by grass with a swing set and a sandbox in my backyard. So, in September 1999, when I walked into this building on Bleecker and Sixth Avenue, I had no idea what I was in for. On my first day, I was accepted quickly. I met Amy, a friend that was soon to become my best friend for years to come. Luckily, I was only six, so it didn't take much to get the suburbia out of me. As each day came and went, I was molded into who I am today. It all started in first grade. I rode the subway for the first time with Margaret, but didn't realize it until I got home, what the weird underground train actually was. I played on the roof, sang in assemblies, and had my first crush. I was getting used to this new place, and so far, I really liked it. In second grade, I started girl sports twice a week with Hannah and Ida, which I hated so much, but somehow always ended up having fun. I finally felt like I fit in and had officially become a city kid when September 11 came along. I remember that day like it was yesterday. Once we had learned what had happened and parents started picking up their kids, we all started to get pretty freaked out. Still, I knew it was safe because I had a feeling of comfort and trust for these people in this school. When my mom arrived later that day with tears in her eyes, I knew that this was an incredibly serious matter. When we finally returned to school, um, we were able to get through it together. Moving, moving on to middle school seemed like no biggie, and we adjusted pretty quickly to the new environment. In fifth grade, I started weekly yoga class with Olivia, Ida, Hannah, Margaret, and Rachel. This was, also the, this was also the year that I was in the same Hebrew school class as the kid who I knew as the one with big hair who ate huge Subway sandwiches before every class. Little did I know that this was Ruben, who in my future was going to become one of my best friends. I had a feeling seventh grade was going to be a tough year when Victor welcomed us by making us do push-ups first thing in the morning, and I was wearing a skirt. <laughs> in Williamsburg, I remembered hysterically laughing after hearing about Yo-Yo's deep hatred for turkey, or from Charlie's obsession with the hotel soap, which he claimed was vanilla almond, or as he called it, vanalmond. <laughs> Last but not least is this year. It went by so incredibly fast that I can't believe it. Basketball season was so much fun, and every time I shoot the ball, I'll, I'll hear Victor in my head shouting, follow the ball, or gotta make those. <laughs> I learned so much, and nothing will be the same without him or my complete six-person team on the court next year. I couldn't imagine this year without Willie never letting Sarah live up to the fact that she never gets her own coffee, or without Nat's impression of myelin. <laughs> Throughout the years, and especially this year, I've learned so much about each and every one of my classmates, and I'm really sad that some of them won't be moving on with me next year. However, as much as this day is an end to a great era, I believe that not only I, but also all of you, are ready for what's next. We've laughed together, learned together, struggled together, and grown together. Now it's time to move on. I hope all of you will remember the times we spent together, become incredible people, and love yourselves, because I know you can. So, as we move on today, remember what David Gray once wrote. And as we make our vow, let us remember how there's nothing good that lasts forever.